Over 150 moons orbit the solar system's planets, and one of those moons calls Earth's home. The moon was formed according to a theory, when a Mars-sized body collided with Earth about 4.5 billion years ago. The resulting debris from both Earth and the impactor accumulated to form our natural satellite that is 239,000 miles away from us. The newly formed moon was in a molten state, but within about 100 million years, most of the global magma ocean had crystallized, with less dense rocks floating upward and eventually forming the lunar crust. The moon is the fifth natural satellite in the solar system with a diameter of just under the width of China. It is composed of an iron-rich core plus a mantle and crust containing minerals made of magnesium, oxygen, and silicon. The moon's surface was once geologically active and was covered in an ocean of magma. But today apart from traces of water ice, the surface is completely covered in dust and rocky debris. Countless craters dot the moon's surface, each formed by objects such as meteoroids, comets, and asteroids crashing into the moon. The largest crater of moon, the South Pole Aitken Basin, spans across a quarter of the moon's surface and is nearly enough to fit enough to fit Mount Everest inside. In the mid-20th century, humans visited Earth's moon and saw its surface up close. Since then, a volley of spacecrafts had studied our nearest celestial neighbor, surveying its dusty plains and curious far side. Now, after six decades of exploration, we are once again aiming to send humans to the lunar surface. Well, stay tuned with us in this exciting new journey to explore more about the living conditions of Earth's natural satellite, Moon. In the quest for a habitable exoplanet or a natural satellite, Moon has always been the hot discussion for the scientists. As we know that the conditions that are necessary for habitable are water, temperature, atmosphere, nutrients and energy. The brightest and largest object in our night sky, the Moon makes Earth a more livable planet by moderating our home planet's wobble on its axis, leading to a relatively stable climate. It also causes tides, creating a rhythm that has guided humans for thousands of years. NASA has sent three robotic spacecraft exploring the Moon, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and the twin Artemis spacecraft. So, beginning with the most important component to support life is water. During the initial exploration of the Moon and the analysis of all the returned samples from the Apollo and the Luna missions, the scientists thought that the surface of the Moon was dry. The first definitive discovery of water was made in 2008 by the Indian mission Chandrayaan-1 which detected hydroxyl molecules spread across the lunar surface and concentrated at the poles. Other missions such as Lunar Prospector and Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter have not only shown that the surface of the Moon has global hydration, but there are actually high concentrations of ice water in the permanently shadowed regions of the lunar poles. Scientists also found the lunar surface releases its water when the Moon is bombarded by micrometeoroids. The surface is protected by a layer, a few centimeters of dry soil, that can only be breached by large micrometeoroids. When micrometeoroids impact the surface of the Moon, most of the material in the crater is vaporized. The shock wave carries enough energy to release the water that's coating the grains of the soil. And most of that water is released into space. Recently, in October 2020, NASA's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, SOFIA, confirmed, for the first time, the presence of water on the sunlit surface of the Moon. This discovery indicates that water may be distributed across the lunar surface and not limited to cold, shadowed places. SOFIA detected water molecules in Clavius Crater, which is one of the largest craters visible from Earth, located in the Moon's southern hemisphere. Moving ahead, the atmospheric conditions on Moon are quite outrageous. There's no air to breathe, no breezes to make the flags planted there by the Apollo astronauts flutter. However, there is a very, very thin layer of gases on the lunar surface that can almost be called an atmosphere. Technically, it's considered an exosphere. In an exosphere, the gases are so spread out that they rarely collide with one another. Several elements have been detected in the lunar atmosphere. 
Detectors left by Apollo astronauts have detected argon-40, helium-4, oxygen, methane, nitrogen, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Earth-based spectrometers have detected sodium and potassium, while the Lunar Prospector Orbiter found radioactive isotopes of radon and polonium. Recently, scientists even found that water molecules less than a micrometer thick could survive on the lunar surface. One of the sources for the Moon's atmosphere is outgassing, the release of gases from the lunar interior, usually due to radioactive decay. Outgassing events may also occur during moonquakes. After being released, lighter gases escape into space almost immediately. But we need much better atmosphere to live. These elements cannot enable us to survive in the harsh lunar atmosphere. Anyways, they still encourage some habitable conditions that can support life in some forms. Moving next, habitability requires much more than just the presence of a significant atmosphere and liquid water. Other constraints should also be elaborated. We do not know whether there were any intrinsic organic compounds on the moon at that time, but even if not, these would likely have been delivered from Earth by carbonaceous asteroids and perhaps by other sources, such as via meteorite impacts. Thus, sources of organics on the lunar surface may have been available. The early moon may have developed an internal dynamo, the mechanism for generating global magnetic fields for terrestrial planets, but today, the moon has a very weak magnetic field. The magnetic field here on Earth is many thousands of times stronger than the moon's magnetic field. Moreover, its surface may have been partially protected from solar and cosmic radiation. If these early habitable environments ever existed, would there be any evidence remaining? Clearly, we do not see the familiar water-modified topography on the Moon that we see on Mars, and it is questionable whether any topographical evidence of early surface water would be preserved on the Moon after approximately 4 billion years of pounding by solar wind, cosmic radiation, and micrometeorites. On the other hand, there is some evidence for oxidation and hydrothermal activity in lunar rocks. Although it seems certain that if liquid water ever existed on the early moon it would have been much less prevalent than on early Mars. Thus, if liquid water and a significant atmosphere were present on the early moon for millions of years, it can be assumed that the lunar surface was at least transiently habitable and probably also had an inventory of the building blocks required for life. Whether life ever arose on the moon, or was transported to it from elsewhere, is of course highly speculative, and can only be addressed by an aggressive future program of lunar exploration. In addition, experiments could be conducted in lunar environment simulation chambers in laboratories on Earth to observe whether microorganisms can maintain viability under the environmental conditions predicted to have existed on the early moon. So, the moon could be the site of future colonization by humans. The discovery that the moon harbors water ice and that the highest concentrations occur within darkened craters at the poles makes the moon a little more hospitable for future human colonists.